Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chonsa. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 16th of July. Floods ravage India's eastern and northeastern provinces as coronavirus infections surge. Nepali Congress say PM Oli has lost moral and political grounds to rule after Ayodhya remarks. And tourism in India, Jammu and Kashmir reopens after nearly four months of coronavirus lockdown. And now for all the details. Monsoon floods have swamped large parts of eastern and northeastern India, forcing more than a million people into makeshift shelters despite the risk of coronavirus. Heavy annual rains are crucial for agriculture in South Asia, but this year India is also grappling with the virus which has infected 968,875 people. Monsoon floods have swamped large parts of India's densely populated eastern provinces, forcing more than a million people into makeshift shelters despite the risk of coronavirus, senior officials said on Thursday. Torrential annual rains are crucial for agriculture in South Asia, but this year India is also grappling with the virus, which has infected 968,875 people and killed 24,915, health authorities say. The floods have killed at least 10 people and injured more than 70 in the provinces of Assam, Bihar and Jharkhand, where heavy rains has submerged thousands of villages in the past 24 hours as authorities battle to ensure social distancing in relief camps. लेकिन इस बार जास्ती हुआ है सबसे हम लोग का तो घर बारी सब डूब गया है आपका घर डूब गया है हाँ डूब गया है हम लोग का इसे एक कमर पानी होता है इतना Meanwhile, over the inquiries of restarting international flights after months-long coronavirus halt, Civil Aviation Minister Hardeep Singh Puri on Thursday said, travels may begin soon, but under defined conditions, as countries are still imposing entry restrictions, including India. International travels in India, like other countries, were banned in March amid the deadly virus outbreak. Government instead, since then, started repatriation of its citizens from foreign nations through special flights. Moving on, doctors in Gilgit, Baltistan raised concerns of a lack of facilities in hospitals while they treat COVID-19 patients. They also demanded number of specialist doctors to be increased and risk allowance be given to the medical staff amid the health crisis. Doctors treating COVID-19 patients in Gilgit, Baltistan held a press conference to seek immediate redressal of a number of problems they are enduring amid the infection crisis. Number of specialist doctors treating COVID-19 patients to be increased and risk allowance dated from February be given to the medical staff were the two key demands that the doctors raised. Emergency ko specialist doctor ke supervision mein chalaya jaye kyunke on call ka jo nizam hota hai usme doctor ko jab on call duty pe bulane ke liye ambulance bhijwai jati hai to doctor specialist doctor ke wahan pahunchne tak aksar mareez tab tak death ho chuki hoti hai uski to isliye hum ye mutalba karte hain ki specialist doctor ko while a large number of doctors in the region have contracted the virus owing to the absence of proper safety gear while attending patients, a lot of others have been targeted by an unruly mob for various reasons. In the same way, risk allowance has been given to all doctors and paramedic staff. That risk allowance has been given to all doctors and paramedics. The risk allowance has been given to all doctors. वो जुलाई से ऑनवर्ड दिए गए जबकि कोरोना यहाँ पे फरवरी के महीने से यहाँ पे डॉक्टर ड्यूटियां कर रहे हैं 
और फरवरी से लेकर जून तक जो ड्यूटियाँ दी हैं उनको रिस्क अलाउंस नहीं देना ये बहुत बड़ी जब्ती है Gilgit Baltistan which is under Pakistan's illegal occupation had reported first clusters of coronavirus as early as late February and March after a number of pilgrims who had returned from Iran were found positive but the authorities as usual did not bother to address even this grave health crisis in the region in news from Pakistan leader of Muhajir Qaumi movement or MQM Hakiki Afaq Ahmed In a press conference on Tuesday admitted that he met former Interior Minister of Pakistan Sindh Province Zulfikar Mirza in prison and after his release but never had any political discussions with him Ahmed rejected the report of receiving money or weapons from Mirza His statement came a day after Sindh government released three joint investigation team reports in which one report stated that he had received money Ahmed said that since ruling Pakistan People's Party has abused the rights of the people in Karachi and people are not happy with the performance of the government. ये सब कुछ सिर्फ इसलिए किया जाता है कि आपको इन GIT से डराया जाए. आफाक अहमद अपने उसूलों पर डट के काम करने वाला इंसान है और वो इस किस्म के इल्जामा से खौफजदा होकर किसी की फरमाइश पर काम नहीं कर सकता. Main opposition party in Nepal the Nepali Congress has strongly condemned Prime Minister KP Sharma Oli's recent statements over Hindu Lord Ram's birthplace the Nepali Congress has said Oli has lost his credibility to rule the country and that it is unfortunate that during such grim times his responsibilities stand at one corner while his actions stand at the other Nepal's opposition party the Nepali Congress has strongly condemned Prime Minister KP Sharma Oli's controversial statements over Hindu Lord Ram's birthplace Ayodhya in India saying Oli has lost the moral and political basis to rule the country In a statement Nepali Congress spokesperson Vishwo Prakash Sharma on Wednesday said his party strongly disagrees with the Prime Minister's recent statements and behavior He asserted Whether the prime minister's statement is the official view of the government or not it should be made clear and that it is unfortunate that during such grim times the prime minister's responsibilities stand at one corner while his actions stand at the other Oli's statement earlier this week claiming that Lord Ram was born in Nepal and not in India has drawn criticism from crores of Hindus in both Nepal and India the statement is also likely to affect the already strained ties with New Delhi This comes at the time when Oli is already facing strong opposition from leaders of his own Nepal Communist Party who are pressing for his resignation over his autocratic style of functioning and previous anti-India statements. In news from Bangladesh, the second wave of flooding is sweeping through Bangladesh inundating white areas and affecting almost 1.4 million people across 15 districts. Authorities have rushed teams to disaster response forces to carry out rescue operations, distribute relief materials and supervise centers where flood affected families have taken shelter. The floods triggered by heavy seasonal rains in parts of Bangladesh have affected over 1.4 million people across 15 districts and displaced tens of thousands of families. Bangladesh had earlier witnessed a short-term floods between June 26th and July 7th. According to the country's flood forecasting and warning center, water levels of two major rivers, Brahmaputra and Jamuna, may cross their danger marks this week, and the water levels may reach at their peak on July 17th. Millions of people in Bangladesh suffer from flooding as the low-lying country experiences seasonal floods almost every year this month. Meanwhile, Bangladeshi Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina asked officials to remain alert to tackle floods which come as a further blow at a time when the country is feeling the severe pinch of COVID-19 pandemic with over 193,590 cases and 2,457 deaths. Sri Lanka has opened its another underwater museum ahead of plans to start reopening the country's tourism in August. After the coronavirus halt, the second underwater museum has been built off the Sandy Bay beach, 
First of Lanka's underwater museum story was opened off Gull Shores to attract both locals and foreign tourists in April. Sri Lanka opened its second underwater museum of the Sandy Bay Beach in Trincomalee City recently ahead of plans to restart reopening the country's tourism in August after the coronavirus halt. The museum also aiming to promote the regeneration of corals and fish breeding has been built by the Sri Lankan Navy. It has been said at a depth of around 60 feet within an area of 150 feet length and 85 feet width closer to sandy beach area, providing a unique sightseeing experience for everyone who swim or dive in. All the statues placed in the whole underwater story have been handmade by naval personnel and the unique sculptures have been produced from concrete and eco-friendly materials. Sri Lanka's first ever underwater museum was opened off Gull Shores earlier this year. The island nation's coronavirus lockdown was lifted in May after it started witnessing less numbers of the infection. The country as of Thursday reported 2,665 virus cases. The Central Tibetan Administration on Wednesday said that the U.S. has taken a good step by curbing visas of Chinese firms like Huawei as the Chinese must learn to play by the international norms. U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo earlier said that U.S. would impose visa curbs on Huawei overrides. Reacting to U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo's statement that Washington would impose visa curbs on Huawei overrides violations, the Central Tibetan Administration on Wednesday welcomed the move, saying that the U.S. has taken a good step. Secretary of Central Tibetan Administration in India, T.G. Arya, said China has to play by the international norms. They have to follow the certain rules and regulations. Yeah, I think this is a very good step that America has taken because uh, China needs to play by the international norms. They have to follow the certain rules and regulations. What China has been doing in a Tibet, Uyghur, Inner Mongolia and Hong Kong is not uh, appreciable. There is a lot of human rights uh, violations Religious freedoms are being uh, trampled down. Pompeo had earlier on Wednesday said telecommunications companies around the world should consider themselves on notice that if they do business with Huawei, they are doing business with human rights abusers. U.S.-China ties are at the lowest ebb in decades with relations strained over the global coronavirus pandemic. China's military buildup in the South China Sea, its treatment of Uyghur Muslims and Beijing's massive trade surpluses. After nearly four months of coronavirus lockdown in federal territory, authorities in India's northern Jammu and Kashmir has decided to reopen its tourism sector in a phased manner, starting July 14 and has issued a set of guidelines for the same. India's northern Jammu and Kashmir decided to reopen its tourism sector but only for air travellers on Tuesday after nearly four months of coronavirus lockdown in the federal territory. Known for its iconic Dal Lake, Jammu and Kashmir is a popular tourist spot across the world for its unique shikara boats and houseboat stay along with Himalayan Valley beauty. Jammu and Kashmir territory receives most of its revenue from tourism and agriculture. Although agriculture activities were allowed during the lockdown, tourism remained shut and was facing a slowdown even before the curfew was announced. After following all SOPs, एक शुरुआत की जाए, एक शुरुआत की जाए ताकि ये सेक्टर जो टोटल 100 परसेंट बैठा था इसको भी किसी हद तक इसमें जान दे और एक्सपेक्ट कर रहे हैं एटलीस्ट हमारा जो आने वाला सीजन है पर्टिकुलरली जो आटम है या विंटर है उसमें हमारा कहीं फुटफॉल ठीक रहे वी आर नॉट एक्सपेक्टिंग कि आज से ही शुरू हो जाएगा 100 परसेंट बट इट इज़ अ ट्रायल इट इज़ अ प्रपरेशन फॉर फ्यूचर the government also started restoration of the Brari Number Lagoon in Old Srinagar city. Reportedly, the Brari Number Lagoon was on a verge of extinction due to encroachments and pollution until this idea of restoring it came into consideration. 
Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash Asia Newsline and follow us on Twitter at Asia Newsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.